The most powerful solar flare of 2024 is set to hit Earth on October 6th, just in two days. Is this the famed solar flash event? If it is, are you ready to become a god? Question your reality and then change it. Thunderwizard.com is the website that supports this YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you will get access to very powerful teachings and that helps me to continue to make these videos and not live in a cardboard box behind the Walmart. If you want to check out my books, go check out michaelwilliamdenny.com. So, most powerful solar flare event of 2024 is about to hit Earth on October 6th. So, I find this very coincidental. If you remember the past couple of videos, I've been saying that I have a very strong feeling that something is coming. And October 6th became uh, put in my, my sights because I woke up one morning and as I was waking up out of whatever dream I was having, uh, I saw a calendar with October 6th. You remember I was talking about this a week, couple weeks ago. I didn't know what it meant or if it did mean anything at all. Well, it's very coincidental because as it turns out, October 6th is um, not only a day where we have a comet that only comes around every 26,000 years, as I understand it. I've heard two different dates for it. One of them was 26,000 years. And that is going to be conjuncting with the sun on the 6th, which is a very powerful placement for that. And then I find out today that just yesterday, um, or today actually, yesterday and today, there's been a release of very powerful solar flares. One of them is so far going to be the most powerful solar flare that we've experienced during this solar maximum that we've been going through since uh, 2022. So this is pretty amazing. So I'm going to walk through some very interesting coincidences about all of this. Now, let me preface that by saying I am not making a prediction. I, I'm not, I don't have any plans on, you know, making any drastic changes in my life. Um, you know, I lived through, I can't remember what it was, there was some new agey thing that happened in the 80s that was supposed to shift everything around and that nothing happened there. And then there, of course, was Y2K, nothing happened there. Um, 2012, the Mayan, you know, apocalypse, nothing happened there. So it, this isn't going to bother me in any way uh, if this doesn't happen. You know, I got somebody left a comment on the channel this morning when I got up and took a look at it. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> when I got up and looked at it this morning, there was a comment from somebody uh, based, uh, that was for my most recent video where I was saying I'm feeling a lot of energy. I, I'm getting, I seem to be getting messages that solar flash might be coming. And of course I said the same thing then. I'm not making any predictions. I'm, I will be perfectly fine if nothing happens. I half expect that's going to be the case. I'm just, you know, telling you the truth. Here's some of the things that I'm feeling. And somebody got very upset and said, um, I'm unsubscribing from your channel. Please stop being so codependent and waiting around for the solar flash. Go make it happen yourself. And I find that interesting because um, I'm not waiting around. I, I'm, I, I don't have any attachment to whether or not this thing comes or not. Um, and uh, I'm perfectly prepared to go on with my life as I have, uh, whether it does or whether it doesn't. Um, but I'm not going to ignore uh, my experiences, my feelings, other people's experiences, my, you know, the, the visions I've had, the communications I had. I'm not going to ignore that stuff. But what I find, you know, ironic is that it's codependent to censor somebody and try and control their speech and try and control what they do. 
So, you know, the person telling me not to be codependent was actually very passive aggressively codependent. But they've unsubscribed, so they're on to better things. But I find it interesting that this subject could make somebody so upset that they need to leave that kind of a message. So that tells me that, you know, if I, if I take a, if I step back from that comment, it tells me that that person was afraid, that the thought of the solar flash coming soon frightened this person. And I have compassion because I, it's also frightening to me. And ironically, it means that you'll be out of control. You won't have any control when it hits. You, you won't be able to control things. And uh, as I've been suggesting, um, and I've been working very hard to do, is to relax and surrender to these energies as they hit us. So I've been getting, it's been, it, there's been a lot of really weird, uh, intense comments. People are, uh, you know, having all kinds, I, I mean, I understand it. People are, I think, starting to flip out. So uh, the thing to do is when you feel that anxiety, when you feel the anger, the fear, is to relax into it. If you really want to get ahead of it, then I recommend that you do the 12 steps to 5D that I have on this channel. That's really the most powerful way to align yourself and be ready for whatever's coming. Anyway, it's kind of too late. You know, I don't mean it's never too late. Truth is, it's never too late. But um, anyway, we'll talk about it uh, later. Um, I'll see if I can get another video out before the 6th talking about some of this stuff. So I do have a list here to go through because I find it very interesting, which is, is October 6th going to be the solar flash event? So we have a 9.0 X-class solar flare, the strongest in solar maximum 25 to hit Earth. It's uh, going to hit Earth on... October 6th. So we've had some very powerful solar storms hit Earth since December of 2022. I mean, some really powerful ones. So this, as I understand it, is going to be the most powerful during this solar maximum. So the solar maximums come and go. This one has been uh, very powerful and so that's when the sun is, the, the poles, the magnetic poles of the sun are shifting. And as they're shifting, the electromagnetic energy, blah, 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 space science stuff um, gets all wackety whack and the sun releases a lot of solar energy. So we're in one of those and um, this is going to be the most powerful event supposedly uh, so far. At least that's what they're expecting. Uh, we also have a 7.1 X-class solar flare to arrive uh, anytime between now and tomorrow, between the 4th and the 5th. So that's another powerful one that's going to hit first. I felt something yesterday as I was making the video. I was feeling a lot of energy. And I think maybe there was some solar energy that was hitting. I don't know. But there's more coming next couple of days. So the Earth is experiencing a Russell McFerrin effect, which increases the solar radiation. So this happens every year right around in um, the fall in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, something about the equinox, which is interesting because, you know, uh, October 31st is uh, supposedly the time when the veil between the physical and the spiritual world becomes the thinnest. And it actually coincides with a time when the electromagnetic field is the weakest every year. It's the weakest right around Halloween, at least. In, I don't know if it's in both the northern and southern hemisphere, but in the northern hemisphere at least. So I find that really interesting. Our ancestors have known that. They've known that there's you know, the weakening of the veil, which is the electromagnetic field. My experience is the reason why, uh, one of the reasons why solar flares are a really good time to do interdimensional meditation and to communicate is because of that. One of the reasons that communicating with ETs works best at night is because there's less um, electromagnetic uh, radiation. 
during the morning and during the you know first part of the day is the worst time to talk to ETs because the sun is hitting the magnetic field of the earth and it's creating this shield. That's why ghosts come out at night. It's because the electromagnetic shield is reduced significantly. So this happens naturally every year around this time. So whatever you know, uh, strength this solar flare is coming, it's going to be increased by what's already happening. Now we're already having a, I forget what it's called. Um, anyway, another fancy name, but it means that uh, our magnetic, the, the poles of the earth are doing funny things and the magnetic field of the earth is weakened considerably. So when you have a weakening magnetic field and you have strong solar radiation, the combination of that means we get a lot of powerful energy. Now, uh, I know that uh, scientists have said most recently, have you've heard me talk about this, that the uh, modern humans uh, took over the earth during a period where there was increased solar radiation, a solar maximum, and a reduced uh, magnetic uh, field around the earth. And the solar radiation actually switches things on and off in the DNA. And so the theory is that the Neanderthals went extinct overnight because of this, that solar radiation hit, did something to our DNA and to their DNA, shut off their DNA, they went extinct and we ended up, you know, taking over the earth. So that, that it could be where we're at. Another one of those kinds of scenarios where there's going to be, you know, who knows what. But we do know that solar, solar storms, solar radiation has a strong connection to these kinds of shifts. And we are, in fact, going through that right now. So, uh, Earth has experienced a Russell McFerrin effect, increasing solar radiation. So the Atlas Comet, which I already talked about, is conjuncting the Sun on October 6th. And this passes Earth every 26,000 years. And as you know, we've been talking about this recently on the channel, which is uh, the Yuga cycle that happens every 24 to 26,000 years. Again, uh, the Yugas that most people think of uh, was calculated actually during Kali Yuga. So the, there's, a, there's a new understanding of this that came from the, um, the yoga master um, Sri Yukteswar. And he actually uh, came up with how the yogas actually work, which you see right here. So the yugas, um, the ages, they don't, they, they don't last for millions and millions of years, as you've been told, and as even most Hindus believe. Um, they, they go through a cycle where there's an ascending yuga cycle, where it goes from the darkest age and ascends up to the highest spiritual state, and then it begins to reverse and it starts to descend, going from the highest state down to the lowest state. And it, then it um, ascends up, ascends down, up, down, like that. So we just came out of a descending cycle, which ended in 1700 AD. We came out of the ascending Kali Yuga, and we're now in the ascending Dwapara Yuga. And as you can see, again, we've I've said this a billion times, um, we are directly opposite the Younger Dryas cataclysm event where things came from a Satya Yuga understanding and then crashed very suddenly, very intensely wiped out all of the um, existing civilizations and many of the, uh, the plants and the animals. And there was probably a solar, uh, could have been a solar storm as well uh, involved in all this. There's, there's evidence for all of this, that there was a, a massive solar event as well as um, a comet. So it could have been the exact same comet, maybe fragments from the exact same comet that's coming towards us now. Uh, 
anyway, we could just be going through it, except we're going to the upside. Um, anyway, I suppose we'll all find out. But um, yeah, um, so let's let's continue here. So the Atlas Comet is conjuncting the Sun on October 6th, which passes every 26,000 years. We are opposite the Satya Yuga descent apocalypse of 13,000 years ago. Many people, including myself, have received strong intuitions of leaving the third dimension. So I've had this experience. I'm not having it right now. Um, today has been fairly normal. Um, other than I felt fairly good. Um, and I still can't shake the feeling that something's coming. I still can't shake that feeling. Uh, and that, you know, everything's about to end or shift or change. Uh, that feeling I still have. But I'm not getting uh, the, the major energetic and telepathic downloads so far today. Maybe a little bit later, but um, so far that hasn't happened. Um, but... You know, as I've said in a previous video, uh, not only myself, but a lot of people are getting messages and feelings uh, that something big is coming and that they're not going to be here much longer. That they're going to be leaving this version of Earth or this version of Earth is going to change like very soon, very soon. Like they're not even, you know, anyway. I, and so um, I'm taking those uh, I'm staying open to those thoughts and feelings for myself and others. I actually wrote a note to my landlord because he's going to be here in like a week or so. And he's going to do his, you know, he spends two weeks here, um, you know, twice a year. And I have to vacate so that he can, you know, enjoy his vacation home. And then when he leaves, I come back. But uh, I've written a note. I already uh, wrote it out and I've taped it to the... Uh, the kitchen bar there so that somebody comes in and sees it, they'll see the note, read it. And I said, you know, if I'm not here, <laughs> if I'm not here, it means that I've shifted to uh, another planet. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, I'm completely ready to wake up October 7th and go and take that down and tear it up and put it in the trash. But in just in case... You know, these messages, these are messages I'm sending to the universe that, hey, I'm open to this. I, I'm not going to fight it. I, I'm, I'm open to it. But unlike some of the messages people are sending me, um, I'm not attached to it. If it doesn't happen, I won't blink. I won't, you know, it'll more than maybe just a, hmm, I guess that's not, today wasn't the day. Um, and uh, I'll go back to my normal life, but I I can't deny, as I said in my last video, I can't deny the experiences that I've had. And these coincidences, I can't deny these either. So uh, lastly, I told you I recently dreamt uh, a calendar date with August 6th highlighted. So all of these things I find very uh, coincidental. And uh, so it's an interesting way to live. And um, yeah, obviously we will find out what's going to happen. I don't know what it's going to be. But and as I said, right now, at this moment, as I'm sitting here, I'm not getting any messages or um, telepathic communications. But holy chiggers, yesterday, day before, I was just getting really just pounded with these very stony uh, higher dimensional energies and messages about it's coming. We're coming for you. Um, you know, you're going to be leaving soon. And I even asked, you know, because I've been asking for two years, is the solar flash real? Is it going to happen? What's it going to be like? And I haven't gotten a direct answer either because you know, they weren't telling me or I wasn't ready for it. But um, I got a message yesterday, day before. And I said, is there going to be, what is the event going to be? And I saw it. Now, I didn't see it like clear as day, you know, in a movie theater. But I, I did get 
the sense that there's going to be a big flash, people will see it, and uh, when it hits Earth, it's going to <laughs> going to shift the frequencies so that we'll be like able almost almost I'm not saying this literally, but it'll it'll almost be like we'll be able to see the different channels and pick one, uh, which one whichever one we want. So I've been to prepare myself, I've been meditating on my 5D world, what I want, um, you know, the things that make me happy, all the energy that I put into creating that. Um, so if, if something like that happens and I see it coming, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start meditating on that fantasy that I've been creating. If it hits, you know, and I'm not aware of it because it, it looks like there might be some, some storm and some rain coming this way. So I might not be able to see it if it, even if it is up in the sky. But some people have said, uh, some descriptions of the event is that the energy hits the earth and it creates like this rainbow cloud that starts going through, you know, the atmosphere and people can see it from hundreds of miles away. I just got hit with some energy as I said that. So maybe it'll be like people will be able to just look off in the horizon and see this, this thing coming. So maybe we'll be prepared. It sounds kind of ominous, but I'm imagining that the energy will be intense. I did get the feeling that there's a lot of light beings and ETs that are surrounding Earth that are getting ready to help people and prepare them. So uh, you might feel a lot of, a lot of, empowering, uh, enlightening energy as it's coming. So I imagine that's so that people won't get flipped out. Anyway, we'll see. Obviously, we'll see. And um, I will continue. I think I'll upload a video tomorrow with some thoughts that I have. Let's see, today's the third. Okay, so um, we've got three days before this hits. And uh, I don't know, for some reason, I thought today was the fourth. So we've got three days before this hits. And um, yeah, uh, I'll upload some, some uh, at least one other video between now and then. And um, I promise you that if I'm able and I am conscious of it, if I wake up on the seventh and the world hasn't shifted and I haven't, haven't ended up somewhere else, I will upload a video say, hey, Guess we were wrong. Obviously, if if it turns out that this is something, then I can't promise that I'll upload a video. It's very likely everybody will be somewhere else and um, YouTube will no longer be a part of that Earth scenario. Um, that would be great if that's the case. I'm, I'd be very happy about that. The other thing that I've said, I may not have said this as clearly, but, you know, during the, I've been feeling this for a while, off and on, but uh, during the lunar eclipse and then the solar eclipse, especially during the solar eclipse, I was done. I was like, I want to come home. I, I'm ready to leave. I don't want to be here anymore. I, I can't see a future here on this planet. I'm just... There's nothing that I want here. I want to come home. That has been the feeling that I had. Uh, I've been feeling fairly light today, so I, I'm not, you know, having that experience today. But that was a, you know, that and the the feeling that I had when they, the Pleiadians came to me and said, "Do you remember what happened when you were king of Atlantis and you created this big fall?" of earth and um, the for three days at least three or four days I was filled with such deep sadness grief and shame and a lot of people codependently have responded and said don't have, you shouldn't have negative feelings no negative feelings are part of being human and uh, as you can tell I've worked through it I'm okay now I'm not walking around with any guilt about that but I was really shocked that this must have been a real thing because I wouldn't have made that up. I would not, I mean, I know what it's like to be an actor and to 
think yourself into some feeling, that is not the same as what I experienced. What I experienced was an awakening of a memory deep in my spirit, deep in my soul. And there was some unresolved feelings that I had, which, you know, that is what convinced me more than anything else that this completely un unbelievable, fantastical uh, thing of, you know, I was once king of earth who ruled from Atlantis and, you know, all of that. That was so fantastical and unbelievable, even though I got the impression that light beings were telling me that over and over again. But when I had that awakening of that soul memory and the depth of the, the shame and the pain that I was feeling, uh, it was very hard for me to walk away from that and say that uh, I made that up. That really makes me believe that I am communicating with God's higher dimensional beings. Anyway, the next video I'm going to be talking about the fact that you are a God. That one thing that I want you to hold on to when this flash comes, if it comes, is I want you to hold on to flipping the script and understanding that it is time to let go of the old understanding of spirituality, which says that there's a big God out there and there's a little you here, or there's the big gods out there and a little human here. In reality, you are the gods. And... All of those gods that you worship, no matter how powerful, once you get out of the third dimension, you are equal to them. And only in the third dimension do we have this experience that we are less than them. But again, this is an illusion. We'll talk more about that. That's it for my friends. Thank you so much. I love you all. Please take extremely good care of yourselves. I will stay in touch with you. And I think we will have at least one more live guided interdimensional meditation uh, I, on Saturday, which is the 5th. So that'll be interesting. And um, yeah, we'll just let Sunday be its own thing. And yeah, we'll see. Perhaps we'll be back on the 7th. Maybe not. Maybe the, uh, maybe my landlord, if he's still here, or the cleaning lady will show up and see this note that says that I've, uh, I've left this planet. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Sorry, my stuff is still here. I'm gone. Bye-bye. All right, that's it. I'll see you next time. Please take very good care of yourselves. And um, yeah, I'll see you on, I'll, I'll definitely see you between now and the sixth, at least one or two times. That's it. I love you all. Take good care of yourself. See you soon.